Tomo News presents Wind Energy. Plan for the world's largest floating wind farm gets the green light. Scotland's notoriously strong winds could pan out to be a blessing in disguise after the Scottish government recently approved plans for a floating wind farm. Existing offshore wind turbines, which need to stand on concrete or steel foundations, are expensive if anchored to depths greater than 40 meters. Instead of anchoring turbines to the sea floor, Statoil, a Norwegian energy company, plans to build a floating wind farm 15 miles off the coast of Peterhead, Scotland. Five floating wind turbines will be installed offshore. The base of each will consist of a floating steel tube filled with ballast. Each wind turbine, measuring about 258 meters high, is then tethered to the sea floor 90 meters down by three moorings. Because they're not actually attached to the seabed, these types of wind turbines are cheaper than traditional ocean turbines and can be placed in deeper waters. Each of the five wind turbines will have a 6 megawatt capacity. Together, the five will be able to power an estimated 20,000 homes. In 2014, Scotland generated 11,740 gigawatt hours of power from wind, which nearly made up a third of Scotland's total energy consumption. Statoil's goal with this $232 million pilot project is to demonstrate global market potential for turbines. Japanese engineer develops turbine that loves typhoons. A new type of wind mechanism being developed in Japan is designed to not only harness power from the wind, but also to be particularly effective during typhoons. A typhoon turbine created by a Japanese engineer consists of three vertical blades and a central rod. It has an omnidirectional access so that it can respond to wind coming from every direction. The turbine makes use of the principle of the Magnus effect. Air curves when passing by a rotating object and the downward deflection of the airflow produces a lifting force that counteracts the force of gravity, enabling the object to remain airborne. The blades are controlled by the central rod which can be tightened to slow down or stop the blades completely, regardless of the external forces. Under normal circumstances, the Typhoon turbine can achieve about 30% efficiency, while a conventional wind turbine can achieve 40%. However, conventional wind turbines can be damaged by typhoons, while the Typhoon turbine would still function normally in a large storm. The designer of the Typhoon turbine believes a single typhoon would be able to generate enough energy to power Japan for 50 years. According to the Japan Guide, about seven or eight typhoons pass over Okinawa Prefecture each year, with about three hitting its main islands. If the typhoon turbine is proven to be functional under extreme weather, then Japan could harvest a significant amount of energy to power itself for a long time. Unique wind system may be key to bringing electricity to developing areas. A Minnesota wind turbine company has signed a licensing agreement that will see its energy technology be used in the Netherlands. Shear Wind has a patented system of harvesting wind power that can produce six times more green energy than traditional systems called Invelox for increased velocity. The funnel shaped Invelox system captures wind from all directions, even with speeds as low as two miles per hour. The wind is then funneled through a duct where it picks up speed. The accelerated wind is delivered to the generators on the ground level, where its kinetic energy is harnessed to produce electricity. Any residual wind will be returned to the environment. Unlike conventional turbines, Invelox keeps its generators on the ground rather than on top. This allows it to produce 600% more power. With its capabilities, the powerful device can be used not just commercially, but also in developing nations and in areas where electricity is not readily accessible. World's Largest Offshore Wind Farm? A sandbank in the North Sea could be home to a vast offshore wind farm by 2027, possibly the world's largest. A Dutch company is planning to build a massive offshore wind farm on Dogger Bank in the North Sea, which will include an artificial island equipped with a runway, harbor, and other facilities. The turbines harness wind energy to generate alternating current, which will be sent via cables to the island. There, it will be converted into direct current to avoid incurring power losses when it's transmitted to the UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, and Norway. 
The current largest offshore wind farm, the London Array, can produce 630 megawatts of power. The Dogger Bank project, if it comes to fruition, is set to produce over 30,000 megawatts. Energy company Tenet will likely shoulder the 1.5 billion euro cost of building the island hub and source wind farm developers to install the turbines. A wind power company in the United States announced a new wind power generation technology called Invelox. Invelox captures wind at any speed, even as slow as 2 miles per hour. The captured wind is then funneled through a duct where it picks up speed. The wind's kinetic energy will then drive the generator on the ground level and produce electricity. Residual wind will return to the environment. Invelox is said to be able to generate six times more energy than the amount produced by traditional turbines mounted on towers. Invelox requires less land as the towers are shorter and smaller with no moving parts. Dutch company uses drones as wind turbines. Now here's something you don't see every day. Traditional wind turbines gather most wind energy at the tip of their blades. Dutch firm Ampex Power instead uses a drone tethered to an offshore platform to gather wind energy at higher altitudes. According to Re News, the concept airborne wind energy system is deployed on floating platforms. From there, the drone would fly to an altitude of 500 meters where it creates electricity from high altitude winds. The system can operate at depths of between 60 and 300 meters and is kept in place by six mooring cables attached to the ocean floor. A power cable runs from the platform to land. The company says the Energy Center for Research of the Netherlands calculated a virtual AWE wind farm operating near the east coast of Scotland to cost 137 euros per megawatt hour. Ampex Power says this is cost competitive against other floating applications. Last year, wind energy generated 11.6% of Europe's electricity. The EU is aiming to have renewables power a quarter of the bloc's energy consumption by 2030. Floating Atlantic wind farm could meet the world's energy needs. Would you believe it if we told you the entire world could be powered by a wind farm in the Atlantic? We're not blowing hot air here. According to a new study, building a deep-sea wind farm the size of India that stretches across the North Atlantic could meet the whole world's power needs. Land-based wind farms can produce around 1.5 watts per square meter, while a wind farm in the Atlantic would be able to generate 6 watts per square meter. Several engineering challenges would have to be overcome. A deep-sea wind farm would have to operate in remote and harsh conditions, where waves frequently exceed 3 meters. Laying transmission cables that stretch across the ocean floor, then connect to floating turbines in open ocean, would be another obstacle. A project that big would also require international cooperation and a whole lot of money. Good thing we all get along so well. Amazon is constructing a wind farm that contains 100 turbines. Amazon has announced a new project that aims to result in renewable energy that will power thousands of homes across America. Amazon Wind Farm Texas is underway. The diameter of each wind turbine will be two times the wingspan of a Boeing 747 plane. The farm in Scurry County, West Texas, will be comprised of more than 100 wind turbines in total. The wind turbines will generate an estimated 100,000 megawatt hours of wind energy every year, enough to power close to 90,000 homes in the United States. The latest development by the company, along with four other clean energy projects, should generate 2.6 million megawatt hours of energy each year to power more than 240,000 homes. Spanish energy giant to build Mexican wind farms. Spain's Achona Energy announced on Thursday it had won a contract to provide wind turbines for two power plants in northeastern Mexico. Spanish energy giant Achona has said it will build the two wind farms near the Mexican town of General Bravo in Nuevo Leon state. The Ventica and Ventica 2 wind farms will each feature 84 3 megawatt wind turbines. The projects will add a 252 megawatt boost to Mexico's wind power capacity, which last year reached 1,992 megawatts, according to Bloomberg. They will also help Mexico towards meeting its target of generating 35% of its electricity needs with renewable energy by 2025. Construction of the farms will begin later this year, with operations expected to start in mid-2016. Scotland gets huge 8.8 .8 megawatt wind turbine. Scotland's power grid is about to blow you away like never before. 
The first of 11 massive wind turbines have been installed near Aberdeen on the Scottish coast. The turbine is 191 meters tall, nearly double the size of the Statue of Liberty. Its blades measure 80 meters. One full turn from the 8.8 .8 megawatt wind turbine can reportedly generate 24 hours of power for one house. When complete, it's believed the machine will generate 70% of Aberdeen's energy needs, displacing 134,128 tons of carbon dioxide. According to the Mirror, Scotland is Europe's windiest country and is home to one quarter of the continent's offshore wind power.